I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. During a Senate Banking Committee hearing last week, Senator Bob Menendez questioned witnesses about the state of housing in America. Menendez asked why black and Hispanic homeownership rates have consistently lagged behind those of white households. The witness cited legal discrimination and other financial disadvantages. Listen in for the full exchange. Dream, and countless American families have purchased homes as a pathway to the middle class. Yet according to the National Association of Realtors, the home ownership rate for black and Hispanic households is significantly less than it is for its white households. Uh, Dr. Yoon, when you, uh, what do you believe are the top three reasons that the black and Hispanic home ownership rates have consistently lagged behind those of white households? Uh, America is a great country, but we also have to recognize some of the past mistakes, some legal discrimination that was taking place uh, prior to the Fair Housing Act, uh, which has a legacy impact throughout. Uh, we are seeing uh, the down payment assistant, I mean down payment as the major barrier for first time buyers. So they try to save it up. Sometimes it requires getting help from the family members. Uh, and due to the, again, uh, the past situation that sometimes uh, you have the uh, members of minority households who are less able to get assistance from family members, which then places uh, the, the others at an advantage or you know, one group at an advantage over the other. So down payment assistance is very important. One has to also look at the uh, proper credit underwriting standards. Uh, is there something uh, that is uh, preventing uh, minority households from able to get a mortgage given other circumstances. Uh, I like the ideas of, say, changing some credit scoring models who, are, who have demonstrated uh, the financial responsibility of paying, say, rents on time, utility bills on time. Well, certainly they will be in much better position to take on responsibility for home ownership. And finally, it's about the supply. Lack of supply means home prices zoom up. So mm. even as people's income rises, if prices rise even faster, right. that will be a major barrier uh, to... I, I appreciate that uh, answer. I would add that federal lands and policies created racial segregation, a dual credit market, institutionalized redlining, and other structural barriers uh, that some of which you've mentioned that uh, contribute to the differences between the rates of ownership. What has not been mentioned is how property tax assessments have contributed to lower black and Hispanic home ownership rates and how this has worsened the racial wealth gap. It's well established by historians uh, such as Andrew Call at the University of Virginia that black and Hispanic households have been subject to higher property tax assessments than their white counterparts. Higher property tax rates inflict a double penalty on homeowners. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear myself. I'm sorry. Uh, higher property tax rates lead to home, uh, lower home values, making black and Hispanic homeowners more vulnerable to tax foreclosure and tax sales. And that's by design. Being taxed more for less limits the ability to build wealth through home ownership. Annual overassessment eats away at black and Hispanic homeowners' income and wealth yearly. And when their neighborhoods become gentrified, their property values suddenly and rapidly increase, leaving them vulnerable to foreclosures, liens, and sales if they're unable to pay their increased property tax bills. So the state and local property tax deduction, which we commonly refer to as SALT, in the, is the only deduction in the tax code that allows homeowners to deduct their property taxes. Thus, SALT deduction is essential for encouraging and preserving home ownership and wealth for black and Hispanic homeowners, especially for those that are over-assessed. That's one of the many reasons that on Tuesday, the NAACP passed a resolution uh, to support lifting the Trump 10,000 SALT cap. Now, this has been a favorite target of my Republican colleagues in Ronald Reagan's presidency. They argue that SALT is an unfair tax break to the wealthy, but that argument completely ignores all context. Republicans want to get rid of this deduction because they want to create an environment where states and local governments are forced to cut taxes, defund public education, privatize public services, and adopt fee-for-service models of government. They want to ignore that SALT is an essential driver in how states and municipalities pay, pay, excuse me, pay for education, health care, public welfare programs, transportation, and public safety. And that even though students, patients, residents, and employees may not claim the SALT deduction themselves, they benefit from SALT. These factors can't be captured 
in a distributional analysis. That's what makes SALT so different. That's why in 1984, an entire coalition of states, governors, counties, mayors, unions, and organizations came together to push back against its elimination by President Reagan. That's why the same group came together in 2017 with the unified support of all Democrats. So this is not about rich or poor or coastal elites. This is about who gets to benefit from the American dream, purchase a home, and build wealth. This is about who is entitled to hold on to that wealth and pass it to the next generation. And this is about getting to and staying in the middle class by owning a home, attending a good school, and having access to good public services. And I just wanted to use this hearing to drive that point, Mr. Chairman. I have other questions which I'll submit for the record. 